I'm not a lawyer, but day 23 of the Karen Reed trial was absolutely insane. Michael Proctor, the lead investigator on this case, had text messages from his phone read aloud to the jury. And child, there are text messages between him and his childhood friends, him and his sister, him and his wife, him and another officer, and him and his superiors. And this is your warning, these messages are crazy. There's cursing and offensive language, so get ready. Here we go with direct examination. Now, over the course of uh, your investigation, over the course of this case, are you aware that there were um, iCloud data that was obtained from your personal cell phone? Yes. Uh, who are um, sort of the participants in this particular text communication? The members on this text thread are close friends from junior high, first grade even. January 29th, 2022 at 1036 p.m. Oh, and just a reminder, John O'Keefe was found in the early morning hours of January 29th, 2022. Uh, Chip, name of that, BPD cop. And Chip, who is that uh, referring to, sir? That is one of my nicknames I've had since maybe high school. And what was your response? Uh, John O'Keefe. Message there sent at 10.56 p.m., is that correct? And what does he say in that text? I'm sure the owner of the house will receive some shit. Uh, my first response was, nope, um, homeowner is a Boston cop, too. I was just letting him know that essentially Mr. O'Keefe is a Boston cop and the homeowner was a Boston cop as well. I responded with, she waffled him. Uh, I looked at his body at the hospital. He was banged up. Now, the following text messages are from your friends, is that correct? Yes. What, what does she waffle to mean? What's the story? I responded, she hit him with her car. And the she that you're referring to there, who is that? Miss Reed, my friend in Tennessee states, okay, that's fucked up. I respond, intentional or not. He was frozen in the driveway and she didn't see him, question mark. Uh, that's another animal we won't be able to prove. Yeah, but there'll be some serious charges brought on the girl. And what did you mean by that, sir? That throughout the course of the day, we had compelling evidence that Miss Reed struck Mr. O'Keefe with her vehicle. Uh, number ending 5051, she hot at least. You know, a series of responses from yourself, correct? <laughs> yep, so these came from me. From all accounts, he didn't do anything wrong. She's a whack job, C-U-N-T. So don't spell it. You have to, so this, these are your words, Trooper Proctor? Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead and say them. Cunt. Uh, yes, yeah, she's a babe. We had Fall River accent, though. No ass. And sir, what is it that you were referring to there, or why would you text that? These were, um, from all accounts, he didn't do anything wrong, is um, talking about Mr. the homeowner, Mr. Albert. Um, I had mentioned the compelling evidence against Ms. Reed at this point indicated that Mr. Albert had nothing to do with Mr. O'Keefe's death. The rest of the unprofessional and regrettable comments are something I'm not proud of, uh, and I shouldn't have wrote in, uh, in a private or any type of setting. I turn your attention to page 2540, and there's a, a photograph that's shared within this text communication, is that correct? And who is depicted in that photograph that was shared within the group text? <clears throat> it's uh, Miss Reed being escorted out of the state police Milton Barracks. And these are all from February 1st of 2022, around that time frame, is that correct? Yes. Number ending in 4146, uh, question, is that chick a smoke? I respond, E-H, eh. I respond again, nut bag, as Chief would say. I also respond with, she's got a leaky balloon knot, uh, leaks poo. And what, if anything, is that in reference to? To Ms. Reed's some medical conditions there. Um, again, unprofessional comments I should not have made um, that I'm not proud of. These juvenile, unprofessional comments have zero impact on the facts and the evidence and the integrity of this investigation. They said these are unprofessional comments, but they absolutely do not detract from the integrity of the investigation or the facts and evidence of it. What do you recognize that to be, sir? Uh, text communications between my sister and I. So I texted my sister at work. I just found it frozen to death on a front lawn in Canton this morning. Actually just interviewed Jen McCabe. Said she knows you. And they knows you? Who are you referring to? My sister. She responded, yeah, she knows Jack very well. She's really good friends with Julie. Uh, my sister continues on. Her sister is married to Brian Albert. Now turning your attention to the next page, 2669. Uh, my sister starts off, the can't thing is a homicide. Uh, I respond, this is at 3 in the afternoon on the 29th. Uh, don't say a word to anyone. She said, of course not. I respond, uh, in the very least, it's suspicious. She responds, this is your livelihood. Uh, and then I would never miss with that. 307, I respond, uh, Julie and Chris were at the bar with the victim and girlfriend. Uh, Got to interview them. Uh, I texted my sister, what's up? Uh, she responded, nothing. I just saw Julie and she said, when this is all over, she wants to get you a thank you gift. And I respond, get Elizabeth one. Uh, Elizabeth's my wife. And my sister responds, because I guess her and Chris were friends with John and she's so proud of you for leading this. And then she quite, writes, Elizabeth, question mark. I respond with, she's been stuck with the kids for the last 10 nights. My sister responded with, yeah, but she knew what life is like married to a cop. I never received a gift. I never asked for a gift. My wife never received a gift. She never asked for a gift. Um, private messages between my wife and I. This is me speaking on June 9th, 2022 at 4.56 p.m. I text my wife waiting to lock this whack job up. I'm referring to the arrest after Ms. Reed was indicted by the grand jury. Again, unprofessional messages I should not have sent. Um, I don't have an explanation other than they're regrettable and uh, it's something I'm not proud of, the language I used. 
it was clear that Ms. Reed had struck Mr. O'Keefe with her vehicle. I could turn your attention to the documents before you. Do you recognize those? Uh, it's Trooper David DeChico and myself. And Trooper DeChico and yourself uh, both work within the same unit with the state police, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, April 28th, 2022, 10.52 a.m.? Yes, correct. Trooper DeChico, rookie move, not getting, not going into a meeting with the ME and getting that homicide determination. I respond, Yuri and I had two co conference calls with her, sent her numerous photos, etc. We laid out the entire case for her. Trooper DeChico responds, not good enough, should have had me or Jeff do it. I respond, if you two did it, she would have made it accidental or natural causes. Okay, so the ME is the medical examiner. They conducted the autopsy of Mr. O'Keefe. Trooper Chico and myself, we kind of like to bust, bust each other's chops, go back and forth. So that's what he meant by saying, um, rookie move, not going into a meeting with the ME and, not, and getting that homicide determination. So I start out, of course it's undetermined. Uh, she was a whack job. Trooper Chico responds, dear God, WTF, what the hell is inconclusive about the whole thing? That would be the uh, manner of death was determined to be undetermined by the medical examiner's office. Buckle up because now it's time for a cross-examination. And again, the language is offensive. Don't say I didn't warn you. To August 17th specifically, you were sitting at your desk, presumably alone at your office, at about 10 p.m. at night, going through my client's personal cell phone. Matter of fact, you were sitting there texting with your friends and colleagues at Massachusetts State Police about you going through her personal cell phone. Is that right? Correct, sir. How did you refer to Ms. Reed in that text exchange where you informed them that you were going through her phone? I use regrettable language. Uh, I said it going through um, his retarded, retarded client's phone right now. You were shown a photograph of my colleague, Mr. Unetti, correct? Yes. And then your response was what? I hate that man. I truly hate that man. Actually, your response was, I'm going through his retarded client's phone right now, correct? Yes, after the picture, sir, yes. Who's the retarded client? Um, I was referring to Ms. Reed, again, on professional language. I'm asking who you were referring to. Ms. Reed. You got an explanation. Who was it that you were referring to as retarded? Ms. Reed. The subject of your investigation as a professional, correct? Yes, sir. As the person that you were investigating, you referred to to your bosses as retarded, correct? Again, poor language on my part. Poor language is one way to put it. Completely offensive is another way to put it. Then you decided to make a comment about Mr. Yannetti, her lawyer, correct? Correct. And what did you say about Mr. Yannetti again? Uh, I hate that man. I truly hate that man. You didn't say I dislike him? disagree with him. You said I hate it, correct? Correct, sir. That's a visceral response to someone who's just doing a job. Let me ask it this way. Were you upset or annoyed or pissed off that Karen Reed had gotten representation, legal representation, to represent her? No, not at all. That's her right. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever, ever looked for naked photos of a male suspect that you were investigating? I don't look for naked photos on anyone's phones. But you said you were looking for nudes of Miss Reed. Correct? Like I said, Mr. Jackson, it was an inappropriate joke. Sir, this is a citizen. She's a woman. You were supposed to be objectively investigating. Does your text message to your colleagues at Massachusetts State Police reflect an objective investigation of a citizen? Objection. Do you believe that your text messages were reflective of an objective investigator? I believe poor jokes have, in unprofessional language, have no bearing on the integrity and the facts and physical evidence of this case. You weren't so much as objectively investigating Karen Reed as objectifying her. Correct? Again, Mr. Jackson, it was a poor choice of words and a joke that I should not have texted out, but the, from the start of the investigation, we didn't know what we had. We have and your, Trooper Proctor, your point in saying no nudes so far to your colleagues in Massachusetts State Police was to suggest that you were looking for nudes and you'd update them when you found them. Correct? Incorrect. Well, let me ask you a question. Did you, did you find any nudes of Again. Karen Reed? I didn't go through the photo, sir. Did you find any nudes of Karen Reed? I didn't go through the photo, sir. So I came across successful in your quest. I came across uh, text messages from Ms. Reed to another attorney on January 29th, so I had to stop looking through her phone. Did either Trooper Fanning or Trooper Buchanan dress you down in a responsive text message in that text thread for doing something so abhorrent as looking for nudes or referring to nudes of a female suspect or subject of your investigation? Not that I can recall. In this text exchange at 10.56 p.m., your buddy Bird <laughs> writes, I'm sure the owners of the house will receive some shit. Did you, did you take that to mean that he could get in trouble? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what my, my friend was getting at. Um, and your answer was one word, correct? Yes. What was that word? Nope. And then you followed that up with an explanation as to why you said no. I simply said, homeowner is a Boston cop too, meaning Mr. O'Keefe was a Boston cop, the homeowner was a Boston cop as well. The question that preceded your answer, nope, the homeowner's a Boston cop, too, was the homeowner's going to get some shit for this, correct? That's not what I meant with that text. <clears throat> That's what you wrote. Not what I meant, sir. All right, let's take it in order. Question. Oh, goodness, the Boston cop, I'm sorry, the homeowner's going to get some shit for this. Answer, nope. Next text, he's a Boston cop, too. 
That doesn't sound like an explanation for your note. No, that's just saying he's a Boston cop as well, Mr. O'Keefe. And is a that's Boston why cop. he's not going to get any shit, correct, Trooper Proctor? Well, he's not going to receive any shit, sir, because he and Mr. Albert, the homeowner, had nothing to do with Mr. O'Keefe's death. And you knew this 16 hours into your best investigation. Yes. In a day. Yes. To your satisfaction. To my satisfaction and to all the members of my unit who investigated the that day. Objection. Call some speculation. So uh, I'm going to let it stand. And then Bird questioned, she waffled him? And then you responded, he was banged up. Then a person with the phone number 0095 wrote, I thought he was drunk. Did he get beat up? And you wrote, nope. Yet again, this is before 11 o'clock at night on January 29th, 2022, some 16 hours into your investigation. So before you ever went to the crime scene, before you ever went into the house, only having interviewed three folks, you had this case nice and wrapped up, didn't you? Yes, based on the evidence my office uncovered that day, the one shoe discovered at the scene, the one shoe at the hospital, Mr. O'Keefe's injuries, the broken taillight pieces underneath the snow. Super Proctor, I didn't ask for an explanation. I asked, I, did you in your mind have this case wrapped up? Was it cut and dry in your mind? Yes. And then you indicated, we're gonna put serious charges on the girl. Who did you mean by the girl, by the way? The defendant. Karen Reed? Yes, sir. So the way that you were gonna make it cut and dry, pretty simple, just pin it on the girl. Absolutely not. For all the facts and the evidence, everything led to Miss Reed hitting Mr. O'Keefe with her vehicle. But that wasn't the question that you were answering, was it? The question you were answering was, I assume you guys, you, Trooper Proctor, and your team are gonna quote, make it cut and dry since it involves cops, meaning Brian Albert, correct? Incorrect, I don't, doesn't matter to me who if the homeowner's a cop, if the victim's a police officer. Myself and everyone in my office investigated this case that Saturday, had an overwhelming amount of evidence that Ms. Reed struck Mr. O'Keefe. So it didn't matter to us what their occupation was. We'll see. Let's keep reading, shall we? 16 hours into the investigation. The other decision that you made and the other determination you came to was my client, Karen Reed, was a whack job cunt, right? Yes. Fall River accent, though. You talking about her, the way she talks? The accent. And no ass. Now you're talking about her body, her physique. Correct? Yes. You think that's appropriate? Absolutely not. Then Bird chimes in with a little comedy. Ah, not newsworthy then. In other words, well, if she doesn't have an ass, nothing to see here, correct? And then 5051 says, oh, she's skating. And what did you write after that? My response was zero chance she skated. And then what did you write? She's fucked. She's fucked, right? Correct. You decided on the 29th of January, 17 hours into this investigation, you decided individually, Trooper Proctor, you're not only going to put it on the girl, you decided you're going to make sure this is cut and dry, and the way you're going to do it is to make sure that she's fucked. That's what you were saying. No, absolutely not. Then Bird decides to chime in. Good. No ass bitch. Right? Yes, that's what he wrote. And what did you, how did you respond to Bird saying, good, no ass bitch? I laughed. Thought that was funny, did you, Trooper Proctor? Thought that was funny? It was unprofessional of me. I, that's something I shouldn't have done. Well, I think we all know it was unprofessional. It was a lot of things. I'm asking yep. you, did you think it was funny? No, according to my response at the time, apparently. And then you write, what? She's got a leaky balloon knot. Trooper Proctor, explain to the jurors what a balloon knot is. Um, your, uh, essentially, I guess your rectum area. Your anus? Yes. That's what you were referring to about Miss Reed? Yes. And you were making fun of her because you believed at that time that it leaked? Yes or no? Yes. And then you followed that up, just to make sure you cleared up any mistake about what you meant, you followed that up with the phrase, leaks poo, didn't you? I did. Again, another reference to Ms. Reed's medical issues and medical conditions, correct? Correct. Specifically focused on her anus, correct? In reference, yes. You indicated that your conduct in this case, and specifically your conduct as reflected in these messages, how did you put it? It, it did not affect the integrity of the investigation, of your investigation, correct? That's what you correct. said to the jurors. Correct. Do you know what the definition of integrity is? Doing the right thing when no one's looking. Do you believe that integrity means being honest and having strong moral principles? I believe that's part of it as well. Do you stand by that testimony, that you were showing strong moral principles? In the investigation part, absolutely. Through these text messages, absolutely not. They were juvenile and regrettable. On January 30th, 2022, at 9.13 in the morning, your sister texted you again, Jesus Christ, the party was at one of the Alberts. How did you take her Jesus Christ the party was at one of the Alberts with two exclamation points. How did you take that? Her, the way I'm interpreting my sister's text messages was that surprised uh, and uh, shocked that this is where Mr. O'Keefe was found on the, on, the, on the front lawn of that residence. Then before you ever interviewed Julie, your sister informed you that Julie actually wanted to get you a gift for your participation on this case, correct? Yes. You were asked about this on direct examination by Mr. Lally, right? Correct. And you looked at the jurors, paused and said, I never asked for a gift. I never received a gift. Elizabeth never asked for a gift. She never received a gift. You remember that? Correct. What's your next text? Get Elizabeth one. Get Elizabeth one what? Referring to a gift. So you did in fact ask for a gift, didn't you? 
for my wife who had been home with my children for the last 10 nights. From Julie Albert? Yes. For your participation on this case? I don't know if that's, yes. Well, Courtney Proctor answers that question by saying, because I guess her and Chris were friends and John, and she's so proud of you for leading this investigation, correct? Correct. You responded to a text message from your sister, and your response was, hopefully, she kills herself, correct? Yes. Who's she? The defendant. Miss Reed? Correct. You literally said that you hope that Karen Reed, the subject of your investigation, the woman sitting to my left, about seven feet from me, that she would just die. The figure of speech. You wanted her to, the figure of speech is you wanted her to kill herself. No. Right? No, it's not. Trooper Proctor, Karen Reed, in your investigation, had quickly become a very serious problem for you, hadn't she? No, absolutely not. In your words, quote, all the powers that be want answers ASAP. That's what you texted on January 29th, right? Yes. That put a lot of pressure on you, didn't it, Trooper Proctor? There's a lot of pressure in every case, sir. This case involves a, a Boston cop whose family you are actually connected to, correct? Loosely. Chris Albert, loosely? Yes. Julie Albert, loosely? Yes. Colin Albert, loosely? Yes. Kevin Albert, loosely? Yes. You agreed in your group chat that you needed to, quote, make this cut and dry because another cop was involved. Those are your words, right? Your friends wrote this whole thing, in their words, stinks. You believed, Trooper Proctor, that your life would be much easier if Karen Reed was just dead. No, no, no. Like I said it was a figure of speech. My emotions got the best of me based on, you know, the fact that Miss Reed hit Mr. O'Keefe with his, her vehicle and left him to die on the side of the road. So my emotions got the best of me with that figure of speech. Well, let's talk about your figures of speech. During the course of your investigation, your figures of speech include the following. She's a bitch. Yes. A whack job, correct? Yes. A retard, right? Yes. Her balloon knot leaks, right? Yes. No ass, correct? Yes. She's fucked, according to you, right? Yes. Ass leaker. That was the word you used, a figure of speech, right? Correct. A girl who shits herself, right? Correct. And then fuck her, correct? Correct. Would you agree, Trooper Proctor, that you have dehumanized Karen Reed during the course of your investigation with comments and words like this? I'd say based off that language, um, yes. And you admitted in your own words that the cop homeowner wasn't going to, quote, catch any shit, right? Correct. Because you were out to, mo to quote, make this cut and dry. Isn't that right? The homeowner wasn't going to catch any shit because Mr. Elder had nothing to do with Mr. O'Keefe's death. Because you were going to make sure that the case was cut and dry. Those were your words, right? And Trooper Proctor, it would be far easier, far easier for you to pin it on the girl who's just a whack job cunt, in your words, who you hope just kills herself. Shame on you, sir. Ending with shame on you is wild.